Today, we're excited to have our friend, Dr. Gary Schwartz joining us. We are discussing luck, what luck and synchronicity can mean as powerful information and pointers for our life. Welcome, Gary. Hi, such a privilege to be here with you. Gary joined us um, on the FLFE research team. The purpose is to uplevel the FLFE evidence research and with more rigor, more rigor and we're developing a gold standard of, of, of research for research for companies like FLFE. And we spent a number of weeks creating a high consciousness field together and uh, deeply enjoyed the time together and Gary's uh, intense curiosity, openness, and, and beginner's mind combined with the scientific uh, rigor and, uh, or the, uh, what do you call it? The disease of science. Yeah. <laughs> um, and your Gary, your deep dives into data. There's our three D's from experiments and, and a passion for what emerges is just, just a wonder to, to behold. It's been a privilege to be with you. Well, thank you. It's, um, there, it's rare to be in an environment where a disease of science, by the way, uh, a neurologist, um, I once shared this with a neurologist and he gave it a, an official medical diagnosis. He called it scientitis. <laughs> 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 but it's wonderful to be able to share that kind of um, passion for um, following the evidence where it takes you and, and the joy of discovery and, and um, the joy of, of having the privilege to learn um, you know, all of the, the mystery and magic in the universe slowly but surely as we evolve. Um, and to be in the presence of people and a company that's committed to that as a mindset and a, and a heart set um, mm. is very precious. So mm. Thank you for including me on the team. Yeah, so when I was thinking about how to introduce you, Gary, um, I, got, I had the thought of using a metaphor of uh, describing you as a bowl of soup. <laughs> okay. So one of, the, one of the ingredients would be uh, highly educated. Another one, another ingredient would be respect for the scientific process. And uh, as you inferred before, uh, there's a conscious awareness of scientitis. Uh, so that's something that you, it's a hat that I've seen you take on and uh, put off uh, consciously. So that's interesting that I know a few scientists and, and that's always something that they have to manage. Uh, I guess the fourth ingredient amongst many would be uh, a willingness to follow the data wherever it leads. That's um, actually, that's one of our prayers we do in our research meetings um, is that we ask for the uh, God's discernment to know the truth, but to have the courage to follow the data wherever it leads. That's yeah, a nice framework to start off uh, a meeting with. And then there's the, uh, there's the odd hot chili pepper in the soup and it's in the shape of a Corvette. And when you eat the soup, you hear bass music, bass music playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> if soup could do such a thing, you would be that soup, Gary. Oh, well, you know, I really do love soup when you think about it. And then, and I, I if I remember correctly, uh, Clayton, you like to cook, don't you? Or is that Jeff? I don't remember who the cook is. I like to cook. I don't know if I'm really good at it, but one of the things I do when I'm really kind of feeling overwhelmed or tired is I just make a big pot of uh, typically seafood chowder. That's my go-to wow. go grounding um, cooking experience. Yeah. Wow. Well, the reason I'm sharing it is because I often use soup as a metaphor for how the whole is greater than the sum of its parts <laughs> and how um, no one ingredient defines a complex soup. In fact, um, I've even spent a significant amount of time, and we probably shouldn't do this now, trying to get a, a, a deep level meaning, a definition of the word soup. <laughs> um, so it's interesting that you bring this up. We've never had a soup conversation before. Is that correct? 
Uh, we have not had the soup conversation before. This okay, was, uh, and something. you don't typically bring up soup in these kinds of conversations, is that correct? I am not aware of me ever comparing anybody to a bowl of soup when introducing right. them. And you probably wouldn't have guessed that I have such a deep connection, both personally in terms <laughs> of loving soup and also appreciating its higher significance for looking at nature. No, you have we have no I have no <laughs> historical data on you being associated with soup in any way other than a reasonable assumption you, that you have eaten soup. <laughs> right. <laughs> we are right now living a moment, a synchronous moment is what I'm sharing with you.